Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Azure Stack uh, series. Um, so we are on moving through the topics nicely. We've always done an introduction to Azure Stack. We then did an introduction to Azure Stack HCI and we've been we're about halfway through. We're going to be in part one, or part three, sorry, part three today of the Plan and Deploy Azure Stack HCI topic. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So as I mentioned, this is this is part three of the plan of deploys yes, like HCI. Uh, same format as normal format as normal. We're gonna have some some theory first and we'll do a demo. So today's topic is gonna to be around deploying and validating as yes, like HCI. Um so to implement the just like HCI, you know, obviously I've done it through the, 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 the sandbox, but this is we're talking about the physical hardware version here. To implement the just like HCI, you need to, to first of all set up the just like HCI hardware. So after receiving your HCI, Azure Stack HCI integrated system that you can purchase from the Azure Stack HCI catalog through a Microsoft Hardware Partner, you need to set up your, your data center. And the system should have the Azure Stack HCI OS system pre-installed. And you also need to configure network connectivity from your internal network to the cluster as well. You then you need to create the cluster. So you need to assign computer names that match your sort of custom naming convention. So Azure Stack HCI operating system instances that are running on the Azure Stack HCI nodes and to join them to your uh, Active Directory domain, so domain. While this is typically in your existing domain, you can deploy a self-contained ADDS environment using Azure Stack HCI VMs that are dedicated to Azure Stack HCI environment. And that's what happens in the sandbox as well. Uh, and then you need to create a failover cluster using that Windows Admin Center or PowerShell and ensure that the computer on which you are running a Windows Admin Center is joined to that same Active Directory domain which you're going to create the cluster or a trusted uh, domain. So here we, we see the, this is the, like an image of the, the, uh, the Create Cluster Wizard for, of Windows Admin Center and it guides you through the sort of five main deployment steps. First we have, you know, you need to get started, so get all the servers, so the step one is to get all the servers ready for clustering including picking servers to cluster, join the, the Active Directory domain, installing required roles, features, installing updates and restarting those servers. You then have the networking element, which is step two. So assign network traffic types to your network adapters and then automatically that'll deploy uh, host networking on each server according to best practices using the network ATC service that we spoke about in the last episode. This process involves specifying which network adapters should carry each traffic type, storage, compute and management and optionally customizing those settings. Alternatively, the wizard can step you through your manual configuration if you prefer, or you know, if you're in Azure Stack HCI in version 20H2. Third step is clustering. So create the cluster and validate it. If you're creating the stretch cluster, this phase, this is the phase also sets up two sites for the clustering uh, in Active Directory Domain Services if you haven't already done so. Step four is to, the, the pools, uh, the drives in each ser server together into a cluster-wide storage or pulls if the cluster st uh, cluster stretches across two sites um, using that storage spaces direct and finally step five is the sdn the storage uh, direct networking and uh, this installs the network controller component of sdn and once the network controller is set up you can then configure other sdn components such as software load balancing slb or the ras gateway after the wizard finishes so once we've deployed we then need to validate uh, the Azure Stack HCI service. So before deploying production workloads in your Azure Stack HCI cluster, you should, con you should confirm that its intended configuration is valid and meets the intended performance objectives. There are several validation steps um, for completing, for you to, you know, the easy complete. First of all, validating um, the cluster configuration of using failover clustering validation tools. Um, again, validation of cluster performance by using uh, synthetic workloads as well. Uh, then you can assess cluster configuration by using failover clustering validation tools. So you can run validation clustering using valid, uh, validate cluster option within a Windows Admin Center, or you can validate configuration wizard uh, in failover cluster manager. And you can use test cluster Windows PowerShell command alert as well. Uh, we can then uh, validate the network operational state by using the test net stack. Um, the testnet stack is a PowerShell based uh, testing tool that you can, you can download it from GitHub. The testnet stack performs ICMP, TCP and RDMA traffic testing of networks and can help identify potential network fabric or host uh, misconfiguration or operational instability. 
TechNets that can validate the various network uh, data paths, testing the native, synthetic, and hardware offloaded or RDMA data paths uh, for issues such as connectivity, uh, packet fragmentation, low throughput, or congestion. And finally, you can validate cluster performance by using synthetic workloads, as we mentioned. So the most comprehensive performance validation approach relies on generating synthetic workloads that simulate the, sort of the projected usage patterns, capturing relevant performance characteristics and analyzing the captured uh, data. So to implement this approach on Azure Stack HCI, you use the utilities that are part of the GitHub uh, disk SPD uh, repo, including the VM fleet. The VM fleet provisions a distributed set of VMs to emulate the functional uh, or performance impact of actual workloads in your Azure Stack HCI cluster. So a bit of a shorter episode there, but we are going to now move into the uh, demo portal again. Uh, again, configure some more services with my Azure Stack HCI uh, and start working on getting, you know, maybe Kubernetes or Azure AVD uh, deployed as well. So let's jump through to the demo portal. We are back in the Azure portal and we're going to do another demo and this is something quite quick I wanted to do with uh, AKS. I actually wanted to enable um, uh, monitoring and I think because it's an Arc enabled cluster, uh, so we go back into the... Um, we go back into our portal here. So we're still in our cloud shell. Um, we actually need, what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste a command in and I'm going to show you what we're doing here. Um, so we've got the AZK8 extension. We're going to create an Azure Monitor Metrics. So this is the command you use for Arc enable clusters. Um, and where, so there's again, there's different, different extensions you can do. And we're going to use, this is a command to use the default Azure Monitor Workspace. So um, again, not an AKS expert. We're going to make that very clear. Um, so, but I believe this command will use default Azure Monitor Workspace for Arc enabled clusters. So again, not tried it, so it might not work. So I might need to do a different command. Anyway, so we've got the AZKH extension and we're going to create a name called Azure Monitor Metrics. Um, the cluster name obviously is HCI box dash AKS. That's my resource group. The cluster type is connected clusters and the extension type is Microsoft.AzureMonitor.Containers.Metrics. So if we <clears throat> click OK on that or enter this should if i've if uh if i've chosen the right commands uh create uh, okay so my requires a training create do you want to install now yes we do because we've not got it installed that's all the point i thought um so it runs the az uh, config set extension dot use okay it's installing it now which is great <clears throat> so this is then going to allow it's going to basically enable monitoring on our AKS cluster which is really important obviously to monitor your yeah so by default obviously nothing's enabled um so then we can we can again use more just again trying to show that we can use the the powershell or bash uh, oh and we have a uh, managed resources okay so it's saying that my um my default monitor workspace isn't actually registered uh, say what <clears throat> let's uh, what I'll do is I'll find another uh, I'll might just create another workspace um, and use that so I'll create it in the same location as this one and we'll come back in a second with my new workspace created so we're back and uh, what I've done is I've actually got an existing um, I've got an existing workspace uh, that we're going to try and use so what I've done is if you remember the command went up to um, the metrics so then I've done to add to, to basically to set the actual workspace, I've done dash dash configuration dash settings space Azure dash monitor dash workspace dash resource dash ID equals and that's the ID. So again, let's press entre, enter uh, and see. So it says it's registering, registering. So that seems ah, started off better anyway. Um, so it's saying that it failed. So it has some problems with what I'm trying to do. It's a location, right? Okay. So, <laughs> right, we'll try this one more time with a uh, with a workspace that's in the right location. So I finally got it to work. Uh, playing about some different commands. So let me go right to the top and I'll show you what command I ended up using. So I ended up using the default Azure Monitor workspace. Um, in the end, uh, go all the way up there. No red this time, which is nice. So, um, 
I decided, so I tried to try doing a specific one, try tried doing a specific workspace. Um, again, got got loads of errors as you can see. Similar, not as not as big a list of errors there. Well, actually, pretty much same. Um, and it was in the same location as well as, as my resources. So I had a look back at the documentation, <clears throat> and I found this one: is that AKS create enables your monitor metrics dash n hits, and that was my my cluster and my resource group. Then um, you need an RSA key file. Again, not an AKS expert, so didn't really know how to do that. So I did the same command, but this time I added the uh, dash dash generate dash ssh key dash keys to the end. So that's created the ssh keys. So I mean, again, if you have your own, obviously you use AKS and you use your own, perfect. Um, but then again, it, it actually started to output um, all all these. These look like the metrics or the agent pool profiles here. Um, and it's gone through everything as you can see and, and successfully created it. Um, and if we go now, really, I think I should be able to go to Azure Monitor. Oh, let's actually go to the AKS cluster itself. Um, let's just quit that. Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and we should be monitoring it, really. Uh, will it show me in here? Let's see. Metrics. Yeah. Um, oh, we could actually go to Azure Monitor itself. Um, so let's go to uh, monitor and there's a containers thing here. I would assume assumptions, I don't know what to say about assumptions. Um, two that are unmonitored. All right, so it might just, it might just take a bit of time, I'd assume. So monitoring's enabled. Okay, but it's got, okay, so monitoring's enabled on both of them, which is good. Um, so, well, both the same. Um, so, yeah, it says monitoring's enabled. Um, so, I assume that just needs to update. Um, but, yeah, I just want to enable um, just want to enable monitoring and show you how we do that in the lab as well. So, what we'll do is in the next lab, we'll actually start playing around with uh, virtual machines. So, I've, I've deployed again. I've got loads of errors deploying virtual machines. So, I'll show you the virtual machines that I've deployed. And we'll start having a play back with that. We are getting to the point where I, I'm going to start deploying... Um, I'm going to start deploying uh, AVD, which is the, this really is the whole point of me doing this. Is I just wanted to deploy AVD into Azure Stack ACI. Uh, I have arranged for my special guest as well, um, who who was well. I'm not going to give it I'll give you a couple of hints. Well known within the in the Microsoft community, in the, you know, especially with Azure Stack, um, and I'm very very much looking forward to uh, interviewing this person and getting some really good insights from them. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.